Newsy News. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, you beautiful YouTube Tarkovians. My name is OnePeg, and this is another Escape from Tarkov news video. This time it has to do with where we are in the current story arc. The uh, Lightkeeper extortion story, I suppose, is the best way that we can put this. So for those of you relatively unaware, Lightkeeper, who was at one time MIA and was no longer selling tech items, uh, came back to find that other people were trying to move in on his territory or his business and decided that he was going to fight back. In lashing back, he forced all of the traders, the in-game NPC traders, to, I guess, take a vacation. So they're not here right now. They're missing. At the same time, he forced when Ragman left town to close down the flea market. Well, it appears that through some of the lore, we were offered an opportunity to be able to get the flea market back. And for those of you that haven't been following along, there's a 1.5 trillion ruble, I guess, extortion amount that is currently being tracked on the webpage www.escapefromtarkov.com slash cash. After the video I posted yesterday, there was a new message that showed up that showed some Morse code strips across the originating letter that I showed in yesterday's video. Now, this Morse code, when translated this morning, early this morning, ended up reading, if we raise 600 billion rubles, we end up getting the flea market back. But in just a handful of hours, the community ended up rallying and raised about 100 billion rubles cumulatively in order to bring the flea market back. So now we have a fully functioning flea market. The message that was posted here was from Ragman and basically read that the flea market was open, but in a very vanilla state, there wasn't a whole lot of items on the shelves, obviously, because we, the players, have to now restock the flea market with whatever it is that we're trying to sell through it. And he also ended up noting in his little note that was attached here that the other general trade stuff is still not back yet. And we have to wait until another amount of money is reached with Lightkeeper before he's going to allow us to have access to the traders again. Now, there is obviously the possibility that we don't make the 1.5 by the time that that five-day timer was up. The other question that exists here is whether or not the player base will continue to feed money into the shredder now that we have the flea market back. There's an awful lot of people that were just like, well, I'm not going to contribute a damn thing. I need to hold on to my rubles because them ones and zeros matter. And those people have not fed any money into the event at all. And that's okay. I mean, as a manner of speaking, it's their game. They can play it however they want. The question is, is if there's going to be a lot more people bandwagoning onto the I'm not spending any rubles side of this equation or if more people will end up kind of feeding into it. Because we still have 883 billion-ish, as of the time of this video recording, rubles to feed into the machine. So the question is whether or not we're going to keep pace or if we're going to fall off. And who knows what's going to happen there. Personally, I'd like to see us hit the goal in the time frame that we have allotted, assuming that May 1st is a deadline. If we aren't able to make the 1.5, then the question becomes, well, what happens? Are we penalized? And I kind of thought about this while I was live with chat today on, on my Twitch channel. For those of you that don't follow me there, please come and follow me at twitch.tv slash one peg. I'm live every day. Got to do the shameless plugs, you know? But we had a conversation about this and it kind of struck me that Nikita comes across as the type of dev that wouldn't mind having a sense of permanent change to something that the player base refused to cooperate with. I look at this as the potential to have some like lasting repercussions if we are unable to make that 1.5 mark. Perhaps he kills off a trader. Perhaps we end up eating a bunch more in fees. Perhaps uh, something happens with the overall reputation of Lightkeeper and we have a larger hill to climb in order to be able to get into his good graces to be able to trade with him at all. There's a lot of different scenarios here that Nikita could end up, I guess, playing out if we are uncooperative. There's a lot of scenarios here that Nikita could end up playing out if we end up uncooperative. The question is whether or not he decides that he's going to act on any of them. Personally, I think this is cool. I get that it's annoying for some people and they dislike certain events and they don't like how certain things have played out and the difficulty associated with it. If you were looking at this from the outside, I think you would find that this is a very engaging environment to be a part of. If anything, it creates an awful lot of buzz. And if somebody has an opinion, they have an opinion because they're engaged in the storytelling or the results of the storytelling. People tend to have flashing hot opinions about all of this stuff. And you don't have flashing hot opinions if you don't care. People care. And if it's anything that Tarkov is showing is that there are people that are very passionate in the player base about how things go with this story. And I think that's an important thing to take notice of because there's a lot of games where people might act like they're passionate, but for the most part, they just kind of shrug their shoulders at mechanic changes and they don't really get involved in the story. And in this case, 
There's a lot of people getting involved in the story. Just go look at Twitter. It's crazy. Anyway, guys, that's what I have for this one. My dad is coming to visit this weekend, so I'm not sure if you will see me um, in recordings over the course of the weekend or not. I will try to, as best I can, keep up with everything. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to follow me, follow me on Twitter at OnePegMG. Please consider subbing the channel here. We're getting real close to 100,000 subscribers, and I would love to, love to see that number. Or you can always come and watch me live on Twitch.tv OnePeg. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.